Yeah. All right, here we go. <clears throat> so let's start with number one. Let me get it pulled up here. So we're looking for the ones that are a little more tricky this time. All right, so number one goes 2R plus 9. Yikes, it's, I love something bulky, but that's a little too bulky. R squared minus 9. Right here, let me write it over here. Let's go 2R over R squared minus 9 plus 9 over R plus 3. All right, so with this, um, let me see what the instructions are here. Looks like you to add or subtract these. Okay, so you know in order to do anything with this at all, the denominator down here has to be the same. These guys down here. So the objective is to get them alike so that you can even do anything with it in the first place. Because remember, a principle of... Um, Math in general is when you're dealing with fractions, the denominator has to be the same. Can't add these two things, right? They have to have the same denominator. So if you multiply the one third um, by two on both the top and bottom, you get two over six. And then if you multiply this by three, you get three over six. And the reason I chose different numbers for these is because I knew it would make the bottoms the same. So it doesn't matter what number you use for each one, as long as the denominator is the same. And now these add up to make five, six, and ta-da, you're good to go. And so we're gonna use the same principle um, over here with these guys. We gotta get the denominators the same, okay? So that's what we're gonna work on um, when it comes down to um, uh, adding these guys, all right? so. I'm going to take this down here and go ahead and break this guy up right here. So, um, oh wait, I wrote this wrong. <laughs> this is actually R squared. All right, cool. Because that's what's on your worksheet. So forgive, that was a typo. But anyhow, the principle's still the same though. All right, so I'm going to leave that just the same. And then I know, um, I know that this right here breaks down because it's a perfect square so the r squared breaks down into r and minus 9 plus 3 and r minus 3 because this is the this is a difference of two perfect squares so um and that was in your previous um section all right now looking at this i can see that r plus 3 is already in common so remember over here here let me erase all these scribbles Remember that over here, we had to make the bottoms the same in order to add them. And so I multiplied this by two, multiplied this by three, so that we would end up with the same right here, right? And so it's the same principle over here. I see that they have r plus three in common, and I just need to get an r minus three over here so that these will both have a r minus three. So I'm gonna multiply this right one over here by r minus three so that they both have the same denominator. So have a look. I'm gonna multiply the top by r minus three and the bottom by r minus three. The same as here, I had to multiply the bottom by three and I had to multiply the top by three. That's how I ended up with six on the bottom and three on the top. So same principle over here. I multiply the bottom by r minus three and the top by r minus three. So they both now have r minus three in the bottom. And now that both the bottoms are the exact same, now I can add them. Because they cannot be added until the bottoms are the same. And I can add or subtract or whatever I want to do with it. Um, but it starts with that. So this may be a good time to pause if you want to, but if you want to see the solution, uh, we'll go ahead. So now that the bottoms are the same. The bottom goes R plus three, R minus three. And then I just add the tops. Two R plus nine times R minus three. 
And now this still isn't simplified yet because I need to multiply this guy out here. So my next step will be 2r plus 9r minus 27 over r plus 3 times r minus 3, which means my final answer will be 11r minus 27 over r plus 3 times r minus 3. Done. All right, so that's that one. So quick recap, what we did in this was we recognized that we needed to have the same bottoms because in math, this is a general principle. And then we took this r squared minus nine, recognized that it was a difference of perfect squares. We broke it down to r plus three, r minus three, which showed us that we already have one part of the equation solved. That's this r plus three and this r plus three. Then we just multiplied this right one by r minus three because we recognized that that was the only thing they had different and they need to be the same. The bottoms need to be the same in order to add two fractions or subtract two fractions. So we multiplied this right one by r minus three, both the bottom and the top. Then once they have the same bottom, we just combine them, simplified and got our final answer. Ta-da. All right, now next. x plus 1 over x plus 2 minus, hang on, i got to read this um, picture, 9x plus 15 over x squared plus 7x plus 10. Okay, same thing here. So when I see stuff like this, the first thing I'm looking at is, okay, cool, what can I factor out to make this thing look much simpler? So... I'm going to go ahead and take, I'm going to leave the right the same because I know that's already simplified. This right here is already simplified. There's nothing more for me to do to it for now. Um, minus, um, I see that I can take, I can factor a 3 out of this guy. So I'm going to factor 3 out and leave 3x plus 5. Cool. And then here on the bottom, I, I'm going to look at this guy down here and see what I can factor out of here. So remember, when you're fact, this leading x term doesn't have any number in front of it, so I know I can just look at this last number, and I know you remember this, and do the factors of 10 and add them to come up with the middle number. So that's going to be x plus 2 and x plus 5, because 5 times 2 is 10, and 2 plus 5 is 7. So now this is... Huh, some ain't right about this. I think this, this problem is copied wrong. <laughs> Hang tight, let me look at your original. Some may write about this. All right, so I'm sending you a text about that one because I need to see the original. I think something's amiss here because I, cause it's looking like, and I'll tell you what I'm thinking here. It's, I'm, I was thinking this was going to be a common denominator with this, and it's not, so I have a feeling there's some typo up here in the one that you copied into your notebook. I have a feeling this is probably supposed to be minus 15, but we will, or sorry, this down here is probably supposed to be minus something down here. This is probably supposed to be minus right here, this 7, but we'll see. I'm going to wait for you to send it, because something doesn't smell right about that. Um... Yeah, we'll see, because we can work this if it's actually like this, but I don't think it is. I'm going to wait for you to send that. Um, so let's go on to the next to save some time. Here, this is a much quicker way. Logan showed me when I was tutoring him how to cut it faster. There we go. Boom. All right, so let's go to the next one. All right, your next one says x plus 2. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this is the one I had to have you send, too, because someone right about it. <laughs> um, let's see. All right, x over x plus 4 plus 2 over x plus 5. And here, I wrote that kind of big. Okay. 
x plus 5 equals 4x plus 48 over x squared plus 9x plus 20. All right, so here's what we're looking at here. Um, for this one, um, all right, first thing I'm looking at is, okay, cool, this left side here is already factored. So I'm just going to copy it because there's nothing more for me to do with it for now. I know that I can't add it up right now because the denominators are not the same. So I know there's some work to be done that, but we'll deal with that later. Now, on the right side, I see that this top can be factored, so I'm going to do that first. 4 times x plus 12. And then I also see that this bottom can be factored because the leading has nothing in it, so I'm just going to take the factors of 20 and add them to make 9, so that's going to be x plus 4 and x plus 5. And lo and behold, what does that look like? These guys over here, yeah. So, um, same principle that we discussed on the previous problem. Denominator's got to be the same. So I'm going to multiply x plus 5 times everything over here. And I'm going to multiply x plus 4 times everything over here. Why? Because I want both the bottoms to look like this so that we can add all these guys together. So, let's do that x times x plus 5 over x plus 4 times x plus 5 plus 2 times x plus 4 over x plus 5 times x plus 4. All I did was multiply each of these guys by what I needed for it to look like this down here. Take a moment and just have a look at this and see if it makes sense to you so far. You can pause and just see if you can figure out what all happened there, okay? Um, once you got that, go ahead and we'll go ahead and proceed to the next. All right, so hopefully you've had a look at that. Um, I'm going to bring this down. And I just got the text from you. That previous problem was written right, so good Lord. Uh, the other one's going to be okay, but we got some work to do on it. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to bring this guy over here, and then we're going to do a lot of adding and subtracting. So x, I'm just copying this over. Actually, when I say copying, I literally can just copy it like this. All right, boom. Easy, like literally the same. And... We're going to bring that over, so minus 4x plus 12 over x plus 4 times x plus 5 equals 0. All of these bottoms are the same. Because of that, we can combine them. So that is a powerful step, and you, yes, absolutely do it. So x times x plus 5 plus, notice the plus, 2 times x plus 4, notice the minus, minus 4 times x plus 12, and all of that is over x plus 4 times x plus 5, and all that equals 0. All right, now I'm going to work it out. So x, I'm going to multiply this piece first, x squared plus 5x. Multiplying this piece next, plus 2x plus 8, multiplying this piece next, minus 4x plus 48, all of that over x plus 4 times x plus 5 equals 0. All right? Now, going to add up the like terms, so I've got... 5x plus 2x and negative 4x. So these two equal 7x. 7x minus 4x would equal 3x. So I'm going to bring down the x squared plus 3x. And I just explained where I got that from. It's 7 minus 4. And then I'm going to add up these like terms over here. The 8 and the 48. So I've got 48 and a positive 8, so it's 56. So plus 56, and all of that is over x plus 4 
times x plus 5 equals 0. All right. Now, I'm looking at this thing and I'm asking myself, is there anything, is there anything that, um, um, no, wait, let me double check myself real quick and make sure everything looks clean so far. X squared plus 5x plus 2x plus 8, good, minus 4x, minus, aha! Aha! Made a boo-boo. See right here? Minus 4x is supposed to be minus 48. All of us are capable of careless errors. So, instead of, instead of, plus 8, and plus 48 is plus 8 minus 48, so negative 40 is what I should have here. So minus 40, all right? And I had a feeling something was wrong. Here's how I knew it. I, on the other one, I was asking myself what multiplied equals this bottom number, but adds up to be 3. And I couldn't think of anything with 56, so I was like, uh-oh, I probably did something wrong. So over here, what two numbers multiply to make 40? but add up to make three. And so if you were thinking eight and five, you're correct. So negative eight and positive five equal negative 40 when you multiply them. But when you add them, negative eight and positive five equals, or sorry, positive eight and negative five equal positive three. So that's what we're gonna use. So in here, let me just put that in little parentheses here. Positive eight times negative five equals 40 and adds up to make positive 3. So x plus 8 over x minus 5 times x minus 5 and that's going to be over x plus 4 times x plus 5 and that's ironic because it, it, it really tempts you to want to cancel these but you can't. They got opposite signs so it just is what it is. Uh, <laughs> But it is correct, and I'm just double checking one more time to make sure there's no more careless errors out here, because no one is immune to that. All right, yep, we look good. So that's it, man. That's a completed problem. Um, 7x minus, okay, yep, positive 3x. Okay, yeah, we look good. So that's that one. Here's the final answer um, um, for this problem, unless she wanted you to you know, solve for zero. If she did, um, I don't know if you had instructions to solve for zero. So if you had instructions to solve for zero, um, then you would just take these top two and set them equal to zero. Here, let me circle that. If you had to solve for zero, you set take those top two and solve for zero. So x plus eight equals zero and x um, minus five equals zero. And then you would go x equals negative 8 and x equals 5. Ta-da. All right. On to the next. All right. 9 over x plus 1 minus 5 over 2 equals 6 over 3x plus 3. All right. All right, so here's how we approach this one. The first thing my eye catches, and I hope yours catches at this point too, is everything that can be factored. So I'm immediately looking at this guy like, okay, that's not simplified. Let's handle that first, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this because I'm not doing anything to it. And I'm gonna work on this guy over here. So six over three times x plus one. Now my, my, my eye immediately catches that this six and this three can be simplified out. So I'm gonna, we're gonna do that. Um, we're gonna divide both by three. So three divided by three is one and six divided by three is two. All right, so let's bring it down. Again, gonna copy, paste this guy because we're not doing anything with it yet. And we're left with this right here. Now, isn't that convenient? Because my eye immediately catches two of these guys are compatible. We just gotta get this guy on board. All right, so let's bring 
let's bring this guy over first and then we'll deal with getting all of their bottoms the same because remember the bottoms have all got to be the same for us to do anything so nine uh oh wrong color nine over x plus one minus five over two minus two over x plus one because remember we brought this guy over equals zero now we can start working on it all the bottoms have got to be the same so everywhere there's not a two i need to multiply there's a multiply it by two and everywhere there's not an x plus one i need to multiply it by x plus one so it'll look like this i'm going to multiply this guy here let me do it let me illustrate it like this I'm going to multiply this guy times two. I'm going to multiply this guy times x plus one, and I'm going to multiply this guy times two. Because it's what it's what each piece is missing. This piece right here is missing a two in the bottom. This piece right here is missing an x plus one. And this piece right here is missing a two. So let's do that. 9 times 2 over 2 times x plus 1 minus 5 times x plus 1 over 2 times x plus 1. Notice how we just tricked these bottoms into being the same. Got it? That's why we did that. Minus 2 times 2 over 2 times x plus 1. Now all these bottoms look exactly the same, and we can combine them all into one step like we wanted to. So, 9 times 2 is 18, minus, I'm going to leave this just like that, minus 4. And all of that is over 2 times x plus 1. Now, let's get this top simplified. So, 18 minus 5x minus 5 minus 4 over 2 times x plus 1. Negative 5x plus 18 minus 9. I just rearranged this stuff over 2 times x plus 1. And if it looks like I'm writing like all the steps out and it's extra work, I'm doing it. All right, and we're back. So um because the battery died <laughs> on the other camera so um yeah showing each step right all right now um let's finish combining these guys okay so negative 5x minus 9 over 2 times x plus 1 should be the final answer. Now that looks really ugly, so I'm gonna go back hunting for careless mistakes. Oh, sorry, there's one right there. But I'm gonna go back hunting for careless mistakes just in case I made one. So just looking back over this, piece by piece. Uh, it looks okay so far. That looks okay. Okay, all this looks okay. So this should be correct right here. Now here's how I'm gonna check it. Uh-oh. Here's how I'm gonna check this answer. I'm gonna copy the original problem. Check to make sure this is correct. I'm gonna copy this original problem down here. Stick it down here. Copy our new answer, which should be right here. Stick it right, whoa, oof. Stick it right, ah, okay, fine, stay there then. And um, um, these two should equal each other if I insert the same number into them both. So I'm gonna insert zero everywhere I see a X. So that means this top one is, this one turns into zero plus nine over um, two times one which equals 9 over 2. And 
this one over here should be 9 over 1 minus 5 over 2 equals 6 over 3. <laughs> Very weird. Um, um, uh, God, 54 over 6. I'm multiplying it by their common denominator. Just ignore this. I'm, I'm just checking to see if I'm correct here. Uh, 15 over 6 minus 12 over 6. So, 54 over 6 minus 27 over 6, which is 27 over 6. 27 divided by 3 is 9. 9 div and 6 divided by 3 is 2. All right, so we're good. All right, so ignore that. Ignore me checking it. Just know this is the correct answer right here. <laughs> If you could, you might want to like rewind and see if you can figure out what I did to check it, but if not, that's okay. At this point, it's not really important. Uh, the important part is just knowing how to get to this final piece. And even if your answer looks ugly, as long as you did each step carefully and methodically, this proves it, you're going to get it right. Because even I doubted it. I was like, wow, this, this answer looks ugly. Could it be right? Yes, it's still right. It's ugly, but it's right. All right, now... Let's go, we've got, let's see how many more we got to go, because I need to give this time to upload so you can actually see it before your test. So, uh, okay, good, we've only got one more to go. Uh, wait, no, you sent me another one, hang on, oh lord. All right, well, we're gonna try. Um, all right, X, let's see, this next one is, X over X plus Wait, is that the right one? Yeah, it is. X over X plus four plus two times X plus five equals four X plus 48 over X squared plus nine X plus 20. All right, good deal. All right, I immediately catches that there's a bunch of stuff over here that can be factored, AKA this, AKA this. So I'm gonna work on that side first. I'm just going to copy this because there's nothing more for me to do to this side. Notice we've been doing this all night long. Anything that's already simplified, don't like just just copy it on and, and go to the side that you're actually going to be working on. All right. So I see that the top can be factored like so. And I see that this bottom can be factored like so. And again, it's by noticing this last number is 20. 5 times 4 is 20. 5 times 4 is 20, and 5 plus 4 is 9. So that's how you get to both places. So x plus 4 er, and x plus, uh, or x plus 5, x plus 4. Now, let's get this guy moved over. So x over x plus 4 plus 2 times x plus 5 minus 4 times x plus 12 over x plus 5 and x plus 4. Beautiful. Now, same principle in math applies here. We got to get these bottoms looking the same. And I see that these guys just need a little bit extra loving. They just need like an x plus 5 and x plus 4 in their life. Wait, I feel like we've done this already. Oh my god. It's because we did. Man, we did this. I mean, what are we doing? Ah! All right, yeah, we already worked this, so, uh... Yeah, just... Yeah, like, meh. All right. Let's go to the one we were actually trying to work. I'm trying to find it where you sent me in the text. Here it is. All right, X, whoa! Yikes, my bad. X, that's, that's a little big. All right, X plus one over X plus two minus, my, hello, pencil? Don't you die on me. Okay, nine X plus 15 over X squared plus seven X plus 10. All right, here's our problem. Um, let's make it happen. So, 
Uh, this guy can immediately be factored and so can this guy. Like, let your eye immediately pick that out. So x plus 1 over x plus 2, just copied it down. Let's factor that top one. 3 can come out of it. And then this bottom one. Let's look at this last number here. What numbers can go into that? Probably 5 and 2, right? Because 5 and 2 multiply to make 10, but add to make 7. So you got x plus 5 times x plus 2 on that. Um, um, okay, now, what did your eye catch? Close, but not the same yet. This one needs an x plus 5 in its life. So we're going to make that happen. x plus 1 times x plus 5 over x plus 2 times x plus 5 minus 3 times 3x plus 5 um, over x plus 5 times x plus 2. All right, now our bottoms are the same, so let's just add them up. Make one giant bar because we're, we're one big happy family now. X plus 2. X plus 1 times X plus... Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Okay, X plus 5 minus 3 times 3X three plus 5. All right, and now let's add that top. Let's, let's get that... Ooh, I don't know if we want to add the top though for real. <laughs> I don't know if we need to. Ah! Let's do it anyhow. All right, so let's multiply these out and see what we end up with. So I'm going to multiply this part first, and then I'm going to multiply the second part. So x squared, x squared plus 5x plus 1x plus 5 minus 9x minus 15. All right, cool. All of that over x plus 5, x plus 2. Let's add these guys up since they're all like terms. So x squared plus 6x minus 9x plus 5 minus 15. And all I've done is just rearranged it so that all the like things are with each other. It's going to be easy to add now. x plus 5 times x plus 2. Let's go down another step. x squared minus 3x minus 10 over x plus 5 times x plus 2. All right, now notice this looks real familiar. There's no number out in front of this. And I can think of two numbers that multiply to make negative 10 but add up to make 3. It's going to be 5 and 2. Looks like negative 5 and 2, right? Because these multiplied equal 10 and added equal negative 3. So you know what that means. x minus 5 and x plus 2 is what the top factors into. And x plus 5 times x plus 2 is what we've been carrying over from the bottom. Let's take out our giant slasher and slash the 2s. We are left with... x minus 5 over x plus 5. You are complete. All right, let me get this uploaded because if I start now, it might get to you by 11.30, 45 minutes from now because it has to load onto the computer and upload into YouTube. So let me go. Um, we'll see you uh, soon. Hopefully this is extremely helpful. Wish you the absolute best tomorrow. And um, just go in there and enjoy it. Just do your best to have fun. Um, make extra time on your test to check um, check your answers if you can. Um, but most importantly, just do your best to have fun and relax and be at ease. Uh, it always helps. Um, and maybe even before you start a test, just take 30 seconds to shut your eyes and picture yourself doing well, feeling good, feeling confident, and enjoying the process. Okay, best of luck.
Yeah.